Okay, we can go ahead fine. and get started. Mm -hmm. Is that okay, That's good. everyone? Okay, well, welcome everybody. It's nice to see all of you or hear all of you. Uh, I know it's tough to find a good time for everyone to meet, both semester-wise and um, time zone-wise. So thanks for everyone for making the effort. And uh, we have an interesting uh, agenda for today. And since we're an informal group, I encourage everyone to speak up with other topics or questions as, as you have them. I think every, I think everyone, most will know each other. But if you're new to the group or, um, or if you want to post anything about yourself or your interests in the chat, feel free to do that. And with that, we'll turn it over. I think first up is Christina with an update on the latest version of Mahara? Uh, yes, that's correct. Thank you, Keith, for doing the magic in the background, uh, being <laughs> yeah. our, our infrastructure and logistics person. Um, so what I just wanted to do very briefly today is um, talk a little bit about the new features of Mahara 1604 and give you the opportunity to ask questions or make comments on what you think of some of that functionality that we have there. So we did still release Mahara 1604 at the end of April, so that's why it's still called 1604. It was very close this time because it was a very busy time also with a very um, with an urgent security update right before then. But um, it is out now and we are really, really happy about this release. Although it is very small, I think it is a very important one because it does take us further um, into the uh, for further towards being even more mobile friendly than just having a responsive theme, as you will see um, in a little bit. Now that we have released Mahara 1604, it also means that Mahara 1.10 is out of support. So the currently officially supported versions are Mahara 1504, 1510, and 1604. And but the support for Mahara 1504 and 1604 both runs out in October next year, whereas the one for Mahara 1510 is going to run out in April. So if you're on any of those versions, um, you are still very good for quite some time. And uh, But can already think about moving to 1604 if that were not in the cards for you immediately or if you are just thinking whether to stay on an older version or not. So one of the, the biggest changes we've made, thanks to the uh, Zurich University of Applied Sciences, is that we are now flash without flash, as I call it. Um, we, we are still fancy, but we don't rely on Adobe Flash anymore for displaying videos. We still have a tiny bit of flash code in Mahara that is for the copy button for the secret URLs, um, but we are definitely keeping eye, our eye on replacing that as well. Currently, it is not possible because Safari does not support a non-flash version, and therefore we are just holding out a little bit. Um, but what does this mean for you? Well, if you kind of look at um, a Mahara page that you already created and have videos in them, it does not change anything for you. Um, you do not have to convert anything or so. All we did um, was replace the media player that displays your videos or your um, or your audios that you can embed. Um, embed directly into Mahara from your internal storage. And so the supported formats for that HTML5 player are MP4, MP3, OGA, and OGV. So MP4 and OGV are video formats. The latter one is, one, uh, is an open source one. And MP3 and OGA are audio formats. And by using any of these formats, um, you can easily use the built-in player any, and other and WebM uh, and um, other formats require that a, a player is installed on the students or faculty's 
computer so that they can display videos. The best compatibility um, with mobile devices is by using MP4 and MP3 because then also iPads and um, Android and other um, mobile apps and devices can display those formats, can work with them and um, have all those available. The other thing we did by making a change to, HD, to the HTML5 player is also that we uh, got rid of the dimensions on the video, the default dimensions, which allows us to scale the video to the width of the block and also scale it properly when, it, when the size is reduced when you go to a mobile device. Um, so that's one of the, the bigger changes and an important one because up to now it was not possible to play any internal videos um, on a mobile device simply because we depended on flash and now that has been rectified. Another um, nice improvement uh, that we've made, I find, is the easier tagging functionality. So in the past, you always had, if you had a lot of tags, you saw this long list of tags and had to go through them. But um, now we are using the select two functionality like we have elsewhere in Mahara already. Um, namely, when you search for people wanting to send them a message and also for um, tagged journal entries in that blog, we already used that functionality, so it made a lot of sense to also use it for tags in general. So all you need to do now is start typing a, a letter or a word, and then the suggestions come up, and if there's no word for that yet, it will be added to your tags. We've also implemented the... Oh, sorry, that's the, the wrong one. We also implemented the Open Badges Displayer a plugin that Descendum Oi had created. And that allows you now, without having to install a plugin, to display any of your badges that come from the um, Mozilla backpack and also from the Open Badge Passport. So it is entirely up to you where you want to uh, store your badges. Even if you choose another backpack, for example, if your university or school set up their own backpack, then you could configure it to be displayed as well. That's a site app, or that's a server configuration, but um, many, many more backpacks can be added to it. And so any badges earned in your LMS or elsewhere can now easily be displayed um, just in Core Mahara. Mm -hmm. We also expanded our notification system because um, in the past we did not get any notification when somebody wrote something on a wall, but now that is also being sent by email thanks to Switch in Switzerland. So again, furthering the engagement of um, people when they leave messages, making it easier for you to see them. And we've also changed our rating, so comment rating systems. In the past, you only had the star available, and it had to be a five-star um, five rating at maximum. Now you can choose between one and 12 stars, or you can even transfer form the star into a heart, a thumb, or a check mark. And you can also choose the colors that you want to use for them. Um, it's not like that a student or a teacher can choose which icon to use. It's still one icon for all, but at least you um, do have some flexibility as site administrator to decide what fits best into your environment and um, what you want to make your, your users available. Um, if I remember correctly, a number of you do use the Embedly plugin. Um, to allow students to embed from many, many different resources online. Uh, because while we have the allowed iframe sources available, that always requires a site administrator to allow a specific site through. Whereas if um, a site that has an embed code is um, enabled through Embedly or Embedly provides its Embedly embed code for it, 
then the students can easily enter that and work with it. So making or giving more possibilities for embedding external content. And if you remember, in Mahara 15.10, we implemented the journals um, on all levels in Mahara, so that you now also have group journals, site journals, and institution journals besides individual journals. And so in this release, we expanded that functionality by also making the recent journal entries block available um, throughout. So also put that into group, site, or institution pages. One nice thing that most of you will probably not really see, um, but is very interesting for everyone who does development work on Mahara, and um, some of you do have your own uh, developers um, on site, is the style guide. Because what the style, style guide does is it shows us um, what common elements that are being used in Mahara look like and um, what a developer should use when they create functionality that uses those elements. So that way we get consistency across buttons, consistency across sidebars and many other elements also like tables or navigation items, drop downs without um, somebody needing to know in which part of Mahara these things can actually be found. So they have one stop shop to look all those things up. And the really cool thing I find is that you can look at the style guide in any theme that is currently the site theme. So you don't just see it what it looks like in the default theme, but you can also, if you're using the ocean theme, see directly what this style looks in ocean and then in modern. And if you have your own theme, you'll also see it directly in, um, in your theme and therefore can get more consistency across everything. So these were but a few of the new Mahara 1604 features. There are a few others. Um, smaller ones and those that are um, of interest in particular for system administrators and some config setting changes. And all of them, as usual, are um, described in the Mahara user manual at uh, mahara, uh, manual.mahara.org. And they can easily be found by following the trail of our bot. Or if you want to have a quick overview, you can also go to the index and search for the index entry new in Mahara 1604. And that's it from me. Do you have any questions? And please do feel free to use the mic. Um, Keith made us all pre uh, presenters. Hi, Jay. Nice seeing you here. I think Jay is new to this group. Um, I think it's first time, Jay, for you to be here at a Mahara user group meeting, right? And please do feel free to use your mic, Jay. Um, but to briefly introduce Jay, um, Jay is from Birmingham City University. So another uh, night owl like Roger from Solent. Oh, so thank, thank you very much for uh, coming along today, Jay. Um, Beth asks, uh, with the batch display, can you view the metadata from Mahara? Yes. So what you do, Beth, is like elsewhere, you click on the on the batch, and then it opens up in a in a pop up window, and you can view the metadata directly there. Okay. Thanks, Christina. That that's a change, right? Because with the previous version, you were just I don't think we were able to do that. Is that correct? Or um, in the previous version, we didn't have the open batch display plugin. Um, so you had to do a workaround of embedding the actual um, 
backpack, uh, the actual Mozilla backpack reach as an iframe. The actual Mozilla uh, backpack reach as an iframe. Because uh, you have to, um, because you yeah, have to adjust the iframe. Yeah, adjust that wasn't quite, quite so good. But now what you would do is um, simply choose the block under external media and click with public collections you'd like to show. And in the past, we did already have that functionality just as a plugin, so it would need to have been installed separately. And we made some changes to the plugin itself so that um, you do get a message when, when no entries can be fetched so that you know, okay, I have something in the backpack but nothing, or I don't have um, a, an open batch passport, and also the the fetching of the entries does take a while, um, so we, we do show an inter intermediate message in the block configuration so that you don't wonder what's happening. Um, Keith wants to know if there are some good example sites using badges. Uh, yes, um, there is. I can't show you the, the site itself, Keith. Um, but let me get you the link to a presentation that um, that David Bell did last year at Maharahui in New Zealand. Um, just a second. Um, because he uses it in a very interesting way in general, namely um, with a church community here in New Zealand. And his presentation does showcase very nicely um, what he is doing with it and also how it is being received. He also uses um, badges quite extensively for his mini MOOCs, so very short um, open online courses. Here you go. And so that is not in, in an academic setting, uh, but in, in a more com community setting. Um, incidentally, tomorrow um, US time, there is going to be the ABLE um, Regional Conference in Notre Dame. And Dan Hickey and his team, um, James and Josh, they are going to present on badges as well, including kind of make, giving a brief survey of what the e different ePortfolio systems are doing. So um, we were interviewed for that, and um, David also gave some insight on it. That's the only big, uh, big one I can think of right now, Keith. Christina? Yes. Um, does the open badges, does that work with the Moodle site? So if a Moodle course issues a badge? Mm -hmm. um, what you would need to do, Troy, is export that badge to the Mozilla backpack first. And then you can create a collection, a public collection on your, in your Mozilla backpack and pull that into your Mahara instance. Let me point you to the description on how to do that. And how you can do that is described in the, in the user manual here. So instead of just being able to pull the badges in one by one, what you would need to do with this plugin, how it's been developed, was that you do create a public collection first. And then those public collections will be displayed in your block configuration. And that's how you can get to the, that's how you can easily say which, um, which badges you want to display. Um, so in this case, for example, I had I had take three collections. One was just um, open badges, um, generic one. One was for Able, and the other one was for Maharahui presentations. That's how you can easily group them without having to take 20 or 30 or 40 badges. Oh, thank you for the link, Roger.
That's fantastic. Definitely we'll have a look at that. Yeah, I, I, I can quickly add to that. Um, so that was only oh, last month, I think, up at the other university in Southampton. So it was a really good event. There's a lot of stuff on there um, about badges and micro-credentials. Um, so it's worth having a look through quite a lot of presentations. Um, one that I'd highlight out of that was the one that was towards the end of the day. It was from someone called Roisin Cassidy at York St. John University. Um, and the interesting thing they had, they were doing, was they'd aligned the badges um, for sort of CPD activities to what's called the UK Professional Standards, which is a higher education standard. Um, so they kind of tried to align them to professional standards. And they'd also, for student badges, um, they'd uh, got employers to um, sort of validate or support the badges. Um, so they could be all sorts of different things, but that gave them employer value. So if you're looking at it for your students, if you've got local employers to say, I don't know what the, the skill is you're trying to get the students to do, but um, but for skills and students sort of CPD, as it were, a non-academic award, um, it was a quite good way to have them sort of, uh, you know, uh, um, with a sort of uh, sponsorship from a business or an organisation. Um, and the organisations like that as well, because obviously they're getting their, their name on it as well. So it's quite a good tie-up. But it's worth having a look at that um, presentation. Um, from Roisin Cassidy, um, you know, give you an idea of what they're doing. I was also going to ask, answer, was it George? I can't remember who asked the question about having Moodle and Mahara badges tied together. The way we've done it at the moment is um, through using the Mozilla backpack as the glue. So um, I had a presentation, I was just looking for it, I can't find it straight away, but I had a presentation about how it worked. But um, we had, um, so let me think, Mozilla Backpack w was connected to Moodle and then also connected to Mahara through the displayer plugin, the old display plugin um, that you could download. And that way, anything that was issued out of Moodle could be pushed to the backpack. In the backpack, it could be organized into collections of badges. And those collections of badges could then be displayed back in Mahara or in Moodle or in LinkedIn or somewhere else, you know. Um, so that worked quite neatly, um, and uh, I see Jay's done the same sort of thing. So that kind of works quite neatly, and I did have a diagram somewhere, but I can't find it. Um, but there you go. I'll be quiet. Are there any other questions for Christina? Okay, if not, we could go back to our agenda. Okay. Were you able to do that for us, Keith? Thanks so much. I think the second point is also mine <laughs> for, giving, for giving a brief update on the if, um, Able, e uh, able field guide for ePortfolio. And um, at, uh, at the moment, I'd just like to say that it's still underway. Um, the editors are furiously looking at it and um, editing everything, um, all, looking at all the chapters. Um, and to my knowledge, at the moment, it looks like October or November that this field guide is going to be published. So it's unfortunately still a ways away, and and we can't tell, can't really tell you too much about it, um, because it is a publication. So we we do need to stick to that. But the plan really is to have the field guide, which is very short chapters on individual aspects of um, e-portfolio work, more like an executive summary for. Um, university um, senior executives, and um, it's pitched at a very, it's supposed to be pitched at a very high level, um, and not going into too much detail, but where the detail can come in is in case studies and examples that are then being displayed in resource pages. 
um, we, we are still collecting examples and um, still looking into how best to how best to make them available and our ideal of course is that we link out to the examples that are elsewhere online um, so that people can can explore those websites more and learn more about the organizations as well so i'm involved in the employability chapter and um, therefore, we, we are still looking at um, some more examples. And if you can think of others, please do let me know. Um, we haven't really made or created a cutoff date because we are still discussing some things with the editors. Uh, but if there are interesting things that you'd like to share, please let me know because at least we can also integrate those then at some point in the newsletter which is coming up the next one in July, and the deadline for it is the 27th of June. So if you want to um, start thinking about what to write there, you can also do that and send it through at any time. Thank you. Um, if there aren't any other questions for Christina, um, I think we can move on to the next agenda item, which also concerns um, ABLE. Um, so I just wanted to uh, officially announce uh, to this group that uh, PACE will be hosting the 2017 Regional Conference. Um, it's still in the initial uh, planning stages uh, with Trent and ABLE, but we're just excited about this opportunity and we wanted to share the news with this group. Um, it's tentatively scheduled right now um, for March 2nd to March 3rd. And we wanted to today, just uh, in addition to announcing it and letting this, giving this uh, group early notice, uh, we also just wanted to open the floor to discuss um, a possible topics for a mug panel at the event um, to see if there's uh, different things that we want to discuss there. So we wanted to, uh, for anyone that's interested and thinks that they might be able to attend virtually or in person, uh, what kind of topics or things that you would want to discuss at that type of a panel. So I'm just going to open it um, to anybody who wants to jump in here. To, and I'll, I'll take down um, some good ideas so we have uh, a little bit of a record of this. But yeah, if there's stuff that uh, people are eager to discuss, um, jump on in. I don't know if you had any uh, topics in mind, Beth, uh, at the moment, but we did want to hear from the group. we try to do something live or record something as we've done in the past with uh, the Boston conferences. You know, I feel like MUG has been um, integral uh, in our ePortfolio um, implementation, especially in the early days, but even in, in the ongoing days of uh, the issues we face, sharing our successes, learning from all of you, sharing ideas. So um, I definitely want to include all of you in that. And we're also going to be looking for a, a small group um, of um, representatives from institutions to be on a planning committee. We don't quite have all the details of that yet, but um, you know, definitely consider all of your all of you invited. And if some of you would like to take on a larger role in, in the conference preparation, um, you know, please uh, let Heather um, or me know about that. So for now, just save the date and I can more information should be coming from soon. I'm sorry, Great. go ahead. Um, yeah, Keith from, from Purchase. Uh, nothing, no definite ideas yet, but just a couple of, of thoughts. Um, we have a new director of academic programs for our liberal studies and continuing ed division coming in uh, shortly. And while she has a, a background uh, in academics, you know, faculty member and so forth, for the last year and a half or two years she's been at task stream so um, 
you know, is already familiar with the portfolio approach, and so we might be collaborating to do something, uh, you know, to raise the visibility of our Mahara system. That may jumpstart some new portfolio use on campus here. Um, the other thing in terms of planning um, conferences and so forth, the um, Center for Professional Development Group at, at SUNY has just um, had a proposal accepted for uh, SUNY to host the 2017 uh, Pod Network um, uh, New Faculty Developers Institute. So that will be also be taking place next spring, 2017, in uh, Saratoga Springs. About maybe the. Do you guys have dates uh, for that yet? What? Do you guys have dates for that yet? We do, but I don't have them off the top of my head. But they they no. may be close in terms of timing. So you know maybe there's something. Close, some kind of collaboration between ePortfolio and experiential learning on the one hand and New Faculty Developer Institute on the other hand that might, might open up some opportunities. I'm, I'm not sure yet. I'd have to think that through. We could definitely discuss maybe doing some cross promotion uh, at the events just to um, maybe at whichever one comes afterwards, maybe discussing some of. Uh, going into more depth on topics discussed there. But yeah, when you have the exact dates, let me know so that we're at least um, aware of them. Um, and ho hopefully we won't be um, completely overlapping. Um, right. But we definitely um, keep, keep me in the loop with that. And maybe we can talk about some cross-promotional efforts and we'll also do. try to stay out of each other's way. <laughs> hey, yeah, Are thank most you. of the attendees uh, secondary ed, higher ed? Um, what is the makeup of most of the attendees? I think the target for April tends to be more higher ed, though K-12 and even um, corporate sponsors and participants, you know, are, are invited as well. But I think the majority tend to be high, higher education. And ABLE has not done one in the New York City area um, yet, so we're, we're cautiously optimistic that it will be a good venue and Good time of year um, to get a to get a nice crowd of people. Not everyone can make the trip to Boston for the big conference, and uh, this will give some folks an opportunity who aren't uh, necessarily necessarily able to go to that one, or give them another chance to interact and be engaged and perhaps present, uh, even if they do attend the. Are you getting Brett Einon from LaGuardia with his community of ePortfolio yeah. folks? Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. Yep, we're in talks with him and um, and uh, you know him and as well as Laura Gambino and and, and others. Right. And, and in fact, um, Brett and Laura, um, they have a book coming out this fall called The High Impact ePortfolio <laughs> Practice: A Catalyst for Student, Faculty, and Institutional Learning. And they're actually going to mention. Um, uh, Case's work on the grant that we, you know, that we worked on with them and 30 other institutions, and um, so there'll be some Mahara references in there as well. So I was just signing off on some permissions for photographs and images for that publication. So it's nicely timed with the field guide, the publication, and just you know the successes um, across our institutions as ePortfolio becomes more of a mature field and one with more of a, you know body of research behind it. So it should be it should be an exciting time and I you know really welcome all of your participation in the planning and hopefully presenting as well. We're definitely going to need <laughs> to call on you um, for topics and, and hopefully you can join us in person or virtually or in some some way. Good for you for doing this. This is very exciting. <laughs> Thanks. It'll be a lot of work too, but hopefully, as Roger, I know, I see Roger still in recovery, and you know, Christine, I know a number of you, you you host these things, and a lot of work to put in the planning one or two days. So. Great. So if there's nothing else about that, I think we can move on to the next topic. 
Yes, yeah, so we wanted to possibly discuss um, an on-site uh, mug meeting over the summer uh, because Christina is going to be uh, in the New York area. I don't know if other users um, might be as well, but we wanted to try and schedule something in person. So um, if there are, uh, Christina, refresh my memory, which dates or around when were you thinking of, of visiting in the summer sometime in August, right? Uh, yes, so it would be right the week after after the ABLE conference. This year ABLE is from the 1st to the 4th of August, so it'll be the week of the ABLE that I'm thinking of being in New York. Sorry, I was thinking about it should be the You said the week of the ABLE, right? Yes, so right the week after the ABLE conference. Okay, so we would, I don't know what every, everybody else feels. I know <laughs> this is an international group, but for those that are in the area, um, potentially for an on-site meeting, um, you know, uh, one of the New York area schools, potentially on August 8th or 9th. Is that, Christine, is that what you were thinking? Um, 9th, 9th might be better, so um, Tuesday. In case I'm um, making a stop from Boston to New York visiting a, a Mahara user. Okay. I guess we just wanted to throw that out I mean, there. Last, last year we had it on a yeah, last year we had it on a Friday. So I'm not sure which day would work better because oftentimes at least in New Zealand Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are the high high kneeling days. Um, so that it's difficult for people to put something else in their travel. Um, but you, you know your calendar is better over the summer. I, for, I, for, you know, speaking for me, the uh, August 9th works fine. Um, I don't know um, how it works for... Uh, Keith or George or Christina, if there's others in the New York area who you might want to include on this, um, we'd certainly be happy to host uh, the pace, but of course, because we have NYIT and we have NYIT and Pratt and some others, so we can definitely make make a wider call to them and and check on the dates. Okay. That sounds good. So I guess we just wanted to throw that out there for now, maybe a, put a tentative hold on Aug 9th. And Christina, it would be great if, I mean, if some of the other schools, like NYIT, that we haven't you know, done anything on there, it would be great to involve them. Um, so maybe we can have a another email conversation about that with, with that group, with the group of locals. Yeah, but I just wanted to, to send that idea out, this group begin planning. Sounds fantastic. Okay, great. Thanks for walking the for putting it up. I'm sorry? Yeah, I can hear you now. Um, I was just going to put um, Jay on the spot here, I know she looks horrified down the camera, but um, I sort of um, forwarded, <laughs> forwarded this meeting on to Jay because she passed around um, something on Twitter the other day, it was the, the doobly wheel, that I can't remember what it's called now, but um, I didn't know if you wanted to share your learning wheel and then ask for contributions. Yeah, 
because that did seem like an ideal an opportune time. Um, Jake, you have full presenter privileges, so you can also share your desktop if you want to talk. Please just turn your microphone on. I don't see that it is um, unmuted. Can you hear me now? Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Okay, um, I was um, introduced to the learning wheel, which is, uh, I'll send you a link in a moment. Let's have a look, I'll send you a link now. And uh, there's quite a few different learning wheels. It's all new to me, so I'm just starting to get my head around it. And I noticed that there was something called um, a Mahara learning wheel, which was empty. So I hijacked it and contacted, I think her name's Deborah Miller, and sent a few suggestions forward as to some ideas as to how the learning wheel could be developed. And I think because I was probably the first person to forward the information to her, she's made me the, the captain. So I'm the captain of the, the learning wheel. So I steer the ship, so to speak. And what I've sent you there is it's a link to Google Docs. And if anyone would like to have a look and see if they have any ideas as to how the learning wheel can be developed. Now, it's quite simple. It has four key areas. One of them um, is to do with assessment. So how you use Mahara for assessment reasons. One of them is for collaboration. One of them is for um, communication. And the other one, let me just check. because I can't remember. And the other one is um, learning content. So if you have different ideas, you literally tap on the link. You can go into the Google Docs and literally just type in your suggestions. Keep them short and sweet. And then um, they will be sent back to Deb Miller. And she will accredit everyone that's been involved. So you get your name sort of printed onto the learning wheel. And then I can share it around to lots of different other people. And hopefully they can utilize it in the way that they see fit. Let me see if I can just get a quick link and I'll send it to you and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. I'll show you a completed learning wheel so that you can see what it looks like. Um, and basically, once it's developed, it could be something that anyone can have access to and you can share it with universities, higher education, and you can share it with teachers and module leaders, lecturers, and it gives them ideas as to how they can use Mahara in different ways. Because sometimes people think that the only thing you can do with Mahara is make a page or the only thing you can do is put sort of content in it. But this is to try and get people to use it more innovatively um, in a collaborative way as well. So I'll see if I can quickly find a link and show you exactly what one will look like or what a completed one looks like. And then that will hopefully give you a little bit more of an insight into how it can be used. Does that sound OK? Yeah. OK. I'll get that and I'll send you something now so that you can have a little look at it. And then the link that I've sent, anyone can click on that and that will take you into a Google Word document and type your ideas in, type your suggestions in, and then I'll get all of those sent off to Deborah. And as soon as that's developed, I'll be able to send it back to you so that you can see what the completed thing will look like and you will have your university accredited to it as well. That's a really fabulous idea, Jay. Thank you for starting that. Because I think it's uh, it's a nice update, update to the Mahara Beginner's Guide and also to the Mahara Code Book from, from many years ago where we had the um, examples of how it, how it can be used, especially in Ellen Murphy's book, um, 
how it can be used in 52 or 53 different ways, but of the beginner's guide also showcases certain scenarios. And now we are, we'll have it crowdsourced and everybody can contribute to it and it can also be updated more easily than a book. So that's really great. And um, what we should definitely also look into once, once we have um, one wheel or, or multiple wheels done, Jay, is that um, we also incorporate that in the user manual and make it part of that so that we can also link to those examples so people can find them easily as well. Okay, that sounds really good. Keep me, keep me in the loop with um, what is being done that would be great. Thank you. Um, if Jay's finished, um, I had one other item and I didn't know if it was in, of interest. I didn't quite know if I'd actually get here this afternoon, this evening or this morning. Um, was about the, just um, some quick look at the Mahara Moodle assignment plugin, which was sort of heavily updated last year, I think it was. It was released or maybe even the year before now. But if anyone was interested in that, I can quickly show you it. But if you don't use Mahara and Moodle together and you're not interested, then I won't show you it. Does that make sense? Ah, I have a yes from Canada. So um, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be quite brief. I'll just see if I can share my screen and then go through... Um, uh, da, 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 da. Desktop. Let's have a look. I'm not sure how this is going to work. I'm actually on a Windows 10 tablet, which is the bizarrest thing to use with um, with this. But give me one moment. I'll try and share my screen. Here. See if I can get this. You do see a spinning icon, Roger. So you are on. You're good on your way. I hope. Um, Yes, there it is. Okay. Okay, so um, just really quickly, for those who know Moodle, um, there's uh, the standard Moodle assignment um, plugin that's built into Moodle. Let me just, um, I could open a new one, new window up here. Um, um, there's a plugin that is kind of two part plugin. There's a single sign on integration, which you need to plug in. Um, and it's called Mahoodle, that part of it. And then there's an additional um, assignment plugin. And I won't talk through the technicals, but if I go and add an assignment like you would normally, which is a standard Moodle assignment, um, what it actually gives you in practice is an additional option, which uh, we call our Mahara My Portfolio. So you should be able to see that there. So along with file submissions or online text, we've also got a separate video plugin that's something else. Um, there's a Mahara um, one there. And you notice that it's got options down here to select your Mahara site. If you've got multiple sites, we've only got one. Um, so the way it works is basically the instructor sets up the assignment um, as you would a normal Moodle assignment. There's some other options here of, for feedback. One of the really key things with it is this option to lock submitted pages. Now, what that means is when a student submits their page to you, and I'll go through how the student submits it in a moment. When the student submits their page to Moodle, Moodle that will then automatically lock either that Mahara page or Mahara collection so the student cannot continue to edit it. That makes our academic services, our registry people, very happy because they know that the student can edit the work after it's been submitted. There were a few questions about Mahara pages that had, say, imported blogs or, um, or feeds from you know, RSS feeds, other things that could be edited, but often they're dated anyway. So if they've got a YouTube video embedded, um, then that, that would have a date of upload on it. So, we're, you know, they're not too, too um, worried about that. Um, our previous method was very, very clunky because the students had to download the uh, export, sorry, the Mahara portfolio for Mahara, zip it up, take the zip, upload it to Moodle. Then the instructor had to unzip that, try and look at it without the theme, etc. you know, going back before the CSS export. It was very, very clunky and didn't work. 
Um, our experience with this is that the instructors absolutely love it, and we're right in the middle of um, assessments submission period for at the moment. So we've got quite a lot of students submitting assessments, and the um, amount of support we've had to give it this year is almost zero. It just works, which is fantastic. Um, so that's the instructor setting. So normal, give the assignment a name, give it a description, set some dates on it, so the late submission date there as well, so if you want to do that. It takes advantage of all the Moodle tools, so you can give individual extensions, you know, et cetera, et cetera, grading, um, so you can set Moodle grading on it, and whether you use, you know, whatever grading scale, we use a, a specific Solent grading scale, all of those tools are there. Then if I just go and look at um, um, from the student point of view, Students' portfolio. So basically, they click through and see the live portfolio as it stands on Mahara. Um, there, are, there are extra options once it's submitted, which then they can up, um, unlock it. So they can give it back if it's a draft assessment or so on. So if it's been locked, they can then unlock it and pass it back to the student. The student can carry on editing it. What we um, do, if I just come out of screen sharing, so that's much I have to show you. A few comments there. If you get out of sharing. Um, what um, what we do have is um, what we do ask students to do. Sometimes they've submitted their work, and then it's maybe related to their employment or something, and they want to keep it and carry on editing it. That's absolutely fine because they can just make a copy of the page or a copy of the collection and a copy of pages, and carry carry on doing that because the page that they've submitted is secure and locked, and people can mark it. External examiners can be given permissions through Moodle to view it. Um, so it's a, it's a reasonably sort of smooth process for everyone, and Moodle controls all the access and all the permissions and all the grading and everything else, and Mahara gets on with being a ePortfolio tool. Um, Jay said there it works very well as well. I'm just quickly looking at questions. You set the feedback settings. The feedback can go into the gradebook and onto the comments page in the... Um, no, there's... Um, so you can put feedback in the portfolio page in Mahara, you can put feedback into um, Moodle, either text or upload a file, or as one of our lecturers has been doing, actually recording MP3s and uploading MP3 to Moodle because they talk through the portfolio that they see on screen, um, and they've been trying that out, but um, it doesn't sit in both places, if that makes sense. However, when the student goes back to Moodle after everything's been marked and the marks have been released, um, oh, extreme! What's going on there? Um, um, something's gone wrong. Oh, 
my mouse has gone funny. Um, the um, once the student um, goes back into Moodle and clicks on the assignment link in Moodle or on the Moodle gradebook, they will then see the comments just as they would with any other Moodle assignment. So, and they can still click the link and go back to their portfolio to see which portfolio was uh, marked. Um, I don't know if Jay wanted to step in there because you said you you've got some experience as well with this. Um. Oh, my screen's gone funny. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Right, I'll try. I'll try and connect to my screen because I've not done this before, and um, I'll see if I can. I don't know what that is. I'll see if I can show you. We can see your screen. Can you please. see that? You can. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, I'll talk through what this is then. Um, so we use um, the submission portal formatively for all of our students to create um, um, a Mahara page and then submit to their personal tutor. So each personal tutor has um, a Moodle course, and this is mine. So when you scroll down, you can see that students have options to submit at various points. So, for example, our first year students in U1, the very first page they submitted sent here. So I'll just see if I can show you what they actually submit. Okay, so here's, um, let's pick one for you. Of course, I'm going to try and pick a really good student. Okay, I'll, um, I'll pick Roxanne. And, and, and actually, this student won the um, Student Nursing Times Awards um, that was hosted in London last week. She won for Child, so she's an ideal student to show you. So she submitted her um, page um, through Moodle, and it linked into Mahara so she could see all of her pages, and she selected the one that she wanted to show me. And as Roger said, just here, you can actually click onto the link and it should take you to a copy of the student's page. And because it's all, it's all formative for our students, so it's very much about what their goals are, what their interests are, um, any particular weaknesses that they identify that they have, and what their strengths are. And you can see that Roxanne's done quite a few pages which she's enabled me to have access to. So I read through this page um, and I make some and give her some feedback. And the feedback that I actually give her is given to her via Moodle. Let me just see if I can get back. Yeah, okay. So when I want to leave a feedback, I actually come back to Moodle and I click on the edit button here and I can grade. It then opens up another window and I get the opportunity to grade all our students, regardless of um, how good their page is, we just tend to give them a grade of satisfactory. And that's because we don't want them to be um, too concerned with the grade. We want them to focus on the actual feedback that we give them. So I've given Roxanne some feedback here. Um, I've talked about time management because that was one of the issues that she was concerned about. And I've provided her with some links there to hopefully help her. Um, so when I've put all the feedback in and saved these changes, then as Roger's already mentioned, Roxanne sees these sees this graded information in her grade book and it's just visible here in the bottom. Does that help? Fantastic, Jay. Thank you for having an instant demo there. That was my plan, but I didn't get here until exactly 7 o'clock. I was completely unprepared tonight. I thought I might do it. So thanks. That's brilliant. That's a really good example. Thank you. That, you're welcome. No problem. I've lost my screen, actually. I can't seem to get back to you. I'm not sure what I need to click on next. Oh, stop sharing. That would help. There we go. OK. Hi. <laughs> So I 
think um, unless there's other items, uh, I have to run to another meeting, but if there are other items that anyone wants to discuss uh, about that, was great, Jay. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, Keith, and you'll be uh, sending out the recording for this meeting. Awesome. Oh, Keith, okay, just well. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I think there will be a, a few minutes to trim off the front, but uh, other than that, it shouldn't take too long uh, sometime in the next 24 hours. Probably. I'll get it up on. Uh, great. Um, I, I wanted to thank uh, Troy and Chris for joining us for the first time Very today. Nice. Um, okay. Thanks, guys. And it sounded like Stina has wanted to say something. No, no, no. I just wanted to thank you, Keith, for for dealing with the recording and Great. making it available for okay, everyone. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. Um, if you have topic ideas for a possible mug meeting in April, uh, I mean, sorry, in um, 2017, let me know. And uh, if any of you are interested in attending an on-site mug meeting sometime this summer, probably August 9th, uh, let me know as well. Um, everybody have a great day, okay? See you next time.